The sun was shining brightly, birds chirped happily, and Celine smiled. Finally, peace had greeted her kingdom, even if it meant she was stuck marrying a man she didn't really know. For her, it wasn't much of a sacrifice, as she had never thought about getting married for love. Her main concern had always been her people, and that hadn't changed. There was only one thing that worried her at this point, the rumors that surrounded her future husband. People called him a ruthless killer, and that was why she had been married off to him. To her father, it was an easy way to end the war and get rid of her. To her, it was a way to save her people, even if she was marrying a monster. However, she didn't believe him to be such as she had talked with him once before. Celine took in a deep breath as the winds blew in a sweet scent instead of the stench of blood. My lady... She turned to Katosh, the only person besides her half-sister who had ever given a damn about her. What is it, Katosh? Her blue eyes held a shimmer in them he had never seen before. He glanced to the floor of the balcony before looking back up. Are you sure you want to do this? You've already sacrificed so much for us. Celine smiled once more. I am sure. If I can stop my people from being sent out like lambs to slaughter, I will do it. I won't think twice. Even if the man I marry kills me, at least the war will be over and you will be safe. Katosh frowned. But we don't want that, my lady. This caught her off guard. We? All of us knights. My lady, you've led us to battle. you fought for us and now you want to sacrifice yourself to some person who's killed hundreds of our men? Celine sighed. It's better for there to be one sacrifice rather than hundreds more, Katosh. That is why I didn't fight father on this. That is why I will go peacefully even if it leads to my death. Not that she thought Grayson would kill her. That was if meeting him hadn't been a dream. Katosh frowned. I'm disappointed in you then. The word stung, but she understood. It was simply his way of putting up a barrier. She hadn't known that the other knights had felt the same way, and it pleased her. She hadn't been fighting for nothing after all. She hadn't gained even more scars and bloodied her hands for nothing. She held a soft smile as she watched him walk away. Thank you. He froze. It looked as if he were fighting himself, trying not to turn around and face her. At last he made up his mind, giving a small nod before rushing off. Not once had she ever seen Gatosh cry, and she hoped to keep it that way. He had been the pillar of strength she'd relied on many times her source of comfort when she had first killed a man. She sighed. Let's make sure everything's packed. It wasn't like she had a lot of things to take with her. Her father never lavished her in dresses or jewels, and she wouldn't have taken them even if he had. She turned down the hall leading to her room. Valerie was standing at her door. Sister? Valerie smiled, her black hair braided neatly and her dark green dress making her green eyes even brighter in their color. How are your wounds? Celine smiled. They are healing nicely, though I can't say yet if I'll be able to wear white for my wedding day. Val laughed softly. Why didn't you let the healers heal you? It would have been better that way since you're moving out soon. I'm sure father wouldn't have hurt them. There was a hint of sadness in Val's voice, and Celine's smile dropped slightly. Well, there were others who needed to be healed more than I. You know me. What are a few more scars? Now Val outright frowned. I'm sorry. Confusion crossed Sal's face. Why are you apologizing? Because you're being sent to marry that man in my stead. Tears now began to fall from Val's face, and Sal moved in, pulling her half-sister into a hug. I am okay, Val. Besides, you know father hates me. I was simply surprised Grayson accepted me as his bride. Her sister clung to her, trembling, but... Celine gently brushed her sister's hair. It'll be okay. I've seen him on the battlefield, but I don't think he's a monster like they say. When we met that day... Val pulled back. 
You, you've you met him on the battlefield, right? That doesn't sound like a good meeting to me. Celine laughed softly. Yes, but I have met him off the battlefield as well. Celine wiped at the tears. I met him in a forest. Sure, at first we were both guarded, but after a bit we began to talk. He isn't as terrible as others claim him to be. He never wanted war, which means only one thing, and you know it. Val's eyes grew wide. Father started this. It wasn't a question. There had been rumors that the Hestella kingdom had been the one to start the war, but there had never been proof of who or how it had started. Celine's nod made Val gasp. But why? Celine sighed. I think he was bored. Valerie couldn't wrap her head around such a thing. That's too cruel, sister. How could our father do such a thing? So many lives have been lost simply because he was bored. Alvin was killed because of that. A fresh batch of tears started to fall, and Val's legs grew weak. Celine caught her, and the two slid to the floor. I'm sorry. I know how much you loved Alvin. Valerie sobbed into her sister's embrace. They weren't sure how much time had passed before Val finally calmed down. Are you okay? Celine asked. Valerie looked like she could break down once more. I don't want to leave you with Father after telling you all of that, but Father has to be punished, and I can't do that under the Hestella name. You know I don't have any true power here. Shock clouded Val's eyes. Do you mean... Celine nodded. I plan to overthrow Father and place you as the new ruler. Valerie gasped. I can't do that. Shh. Yes, you can, Val. You have the brains and the humbleness to rule over our people. Give them better lives, and while you do that, I plan to support you in full, making the Hestella and the Bronsty Kingdom strong allies. But that will only work if Grayson agrees with my idea. Grayson, you mentioned that name before. Celine smiled. That is the name of the so-called monster I'm to marry. It made Valerie giggle. Certainly doesn't sound like a monster's name. The two of them laughed together for a bit before Val turned serious. Promise me you'll be okay, that you won't give up no matter what, and you will find your own happiness. Even if it means leaving me here, I'm okay with that. You don't need to suffer more thanks to our father. Celine helped Val stand. I promise to work hard for both our sakes so we can both find happiness she said before giving her sister one last hug. If you need my help, don't hesitate to send me a letter or a messenger bird if it's something more private. Val hugged her sister tightly. She was honestly afraid to see Celine leave, but she knew it was for the greater good. Now get going. God forbid father see us together. Val pulled back. I'll see you when you come back. She turned to leave before rushing back to Celine for another hug. I will miss you. And I wish you find what you deserve, a life of love. Celine smiled. I wish that for you as well. Now get going before you get into trouble. Val nodded before dashing off and vanishing, leaving Celine to do her original task. Walking into her room, she sighed. Let's get the show on the road. She picked up the three bags that held her stuff, heading to where her horse was and deciding to head for the night's quarters afterwards. Now that she knew the knights backed her, she wanted to tell the knights her plan, but she knew if she did, they would instantly want to attack. That wouldn't work yet, though. They needed solid proof, or they would be deemed traitors and killed, and she could never allow that to happen. There was the familiar sound of metal clashing, and she looked up, seeing her knights training. They stopped when they took notice of Sal. Hello, everyone. There was a silence as they stared at her. I wanted to say thank you. I never knew until Gad informed me that you guys appreciated me. I was happy to hear that. She bowed her head to them, making them gasp, and Ryan stepped forward. Please don't bow to us, princess, he said, kneeling before her. Many of us already owed our lives to you, and now it seems all of us owe our lives to you. If we could follow you to the Bronsty Kingdom, we would do so in a heartbeat. You will forever have our gratitude, and should you need our services, we will be there, even if it means going against the king. An ache formed in Celine's chest, and she smiled. 
Please stand, Ryan. He did as asked, staring at Celine. She had reminded him of his daughter, and he had always feared that he would lose her in a battle, but now it seemed he was losing her in another manner. You guys mean a lot to me, and I am so glad to have battled alongside each of you. Please take care of yourselves. She turned to leave, but stopped. If you see Gatosh, tell him thank you for being my strength. They nodded, but they knew they didn't need to tell him, as Gatosh was hiding, watching his lady head off to face their enemy, and he was stuck here. He bit his lip, stopping himself from calling out to her. He knew he would say something he'd regret. It wasn't like she would return his feelings. A single tear slid down his face, and he left. A few of the knights watched him leave, and that was the last time they saw him. Celine got on her horse and looked out to her kingdom. I will return one day, she whispered before urging her horse into a trot and heading to meet her future husband. I hope he is as kind as he was that day. Then again, if he wasn't, she could live with it. War had strengthened her a tremendous amount. The end. Just kidding. Thank you guys so much. If you're enjoying this so far, like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Hope to see you in part two. Also, let me know if you want me to keep doing voiceovers for the rest of it. It's new to me, but I thought I'd give it a shot. Bye!